What is the biggest difference, Senator, between the majority leader's plan and what you are proposing? Uh, we leave the taxes on the wealthy in place. Uh, we repeal the individual mandate, the employer mandate, the medical device tax, which is only $20 billion. 75 votes to do that in the past, but we leave the investment taxes in place. That's about $500 billion, and we block grant the money instead of giving it out through the federal tax code. What is your biggest concern with the Senate Majority Leader's plan? Uh, I like it a lot better than the old plan, but it still does have most of the power here in Washington. Uh, the bottom line is I think the simplest way to deal with this problem is to allow states more options than they have today. So if you want to repair Obamacare in California, this money could be used to repair Obamacare. If you want to replace Obamacare, it could be used to replace Obamacare. So right now, as you look at the math in the Senate, the Senate Majority Leader doesn't have the votes to pass his plan. If this is far better. I would vote for his bill. I hope he would consider mine. I think they actually work together. Here's the problem politically. No Republican senator is going to vote for a health care bill their governor doesn't like. So what have I done differently? I've said, okay, let's look at this differently. My original bill was to allow people to opt out of Obamacare, take the same pot of money and come up with something new. Well, we just expanded that concept. We said, okay, rather than opting out, let's take the individual mandate, the employer mandate, eliminate it, but keep the taxes on the wealthy in place, about $500 billion of revenue, come up with a formula to block granite to states. They can't spend it on roads or bridges. They gotta spend it on health care come up with a fair inflation rate, and if they can beat that rate, they keep the money and plow it back into other health care systems. To me, the beauty of this is that you destroy the effort to have a single-payer system because you get the money and the policy out of Washington, but you give a lot of flexibility, but you do keep the taxes in place. Do you think that you could get any Democrats to support your plan? Maybe. If you're a single health care Democrat, no, because this is the end of single-payer single health care because states will have the money. There will be restrictions they got to cover. You know, people are sick, but they can devise different systems. If you're a moderate Democrat and we leave the taxes in place, we're no longer taking money from the poor to give it to the rich. Now, that's a hurdle for my party. I'm challenging my party to keep taxes in place that we don't like. Here's your problem as a Democratic senator. You have to go back home and say, I don't trust my state to spend this money. I trust some bureaucrat in Washington. That could be very difficult. But the current iteration, my understanding from what we've seen from the majority leader, is that some of these Obamacare taxes are left in place. Some, but we leave the big ones in place. And just what, what do you say in terms of the timeline? I mean, the majority leader wants to have this vote next week. Is that just not, not going to happen? I don't know. I think this idea can come together pretty quickly. You've got governors opposed to our original bill. I don't know if they'll support the new one or not. But I think a lot of governors, maybe a few Democrats, would be excited about having this flexibility in this new money. I do want to ask you just quickly uh, for your reaction yesterday to Christopher Ray's testimony. Were you satisfied? You had a very yeah. heated exchange with him. No, I, I just he's a wonderful man. And, you know, he's in an odd environment. I was just pushing him. <laughs> odd environment. That's yeah, good odd environment. <laughs> he, he, I thought he did an excellent job. He said that this is not a witch hunt, and it's not. Uh, he said that if you get called by a foreign government or an intermediary to go work with a foreign government on your campaign to say no, I thought he did an excellent job, and uh, I look forward to voting for him. And I want to ask you a final question on this issue that is big in your state, and that is the Export-Import Bank. The business community has come out against Scott Gary. Yeah, I can understand why. I want to get the bank up and running more than anything else. I'll try to get the administration to give us a, a better uh, nominee, but the XM Bank is the lifeline for Boeing, GE, and a lot of small companies in South Carolina. If you can get everybody else to drop their bank, I'll drop ours. China's bank is larger than all of the Western world together. The bottom line is if we go out of the XM financing business, we're losing market share. So my goal is get that bank up and running.